All right, hey everyone. So today I'm going to try and do something a little bit different. I'm going to attempt to explain the programming side of the Harder, Better, Faster, Stronger lyric video that I made. And for this to make any sense, you're going to have to have seen the video that I'm talking about. If you haven't seen the video, link in the description. If you want to download this program file, link in the description. So what I've done here is I've got a four by four grid, four vertical rows, four horizontal rows, and that gives us our 16 different camera positions. And each of those camera positions displays a different lyric. So this is if we're standing behind the camera and we've got make it up in the top left hand corner and never in the bottom left hand corner looking out at the Lego rig. And what I've done to make the programming a little bit easier is assigned each lyric a number. And they are just the number that they normally appear in in the song. So we've got work it is one, harder is two, make it is three, better is four, etc. all the way up. And this, this little S here that I've drawn down the bottom is the starting point for the motors of each axis. So if we look at, uh, say, Do It, which is lyric number five, I've noted the motor rotation values in degrees for each axis. So lyric number five is at 953 degrees on the vertical axis and 200 degrees on the horizontal axis. Or say Over, which is lyric 16, is at 486 degrees vertical and minus 600 degrees horizontal relative to the starting point. So if we know the position of all 16 lyrics, all we have to do is get the camera to move to those positions as each lyric comes up in the song. So for the camera to move to the right position at the right time, rather than try and time each lyric with a stopwatch or something like that, I've gone through and noted which beat number each lyric is on. So ignoring the 50 or so second intro at the start of the song, the first work it is on beat number one. And then we have make it on beat number three, then it goes to do it on beat number five and makes us on seven. Then there's a little bit of a pause and we have harder on 18, better on 20, faster on 22 and stronger on 24. And I have gone through and written that down for the entire song. So it knows that on beat number 35, it has to be at lyric 11. And it knows on beat number 71, it has to be at lyric number seven. However, unfortunately, it's not as simple as just waiting for the right time in the song and telling the camera to move to the next position. Because each time it moves, it doesn't necessarily move the same distance. So some movements take longer than others. And if you notice here on the vertical axis, each row is a little bit further apart. These are 467 degrees apart on the vertical axis instead of 400 degrees apart on the horizontal axis. And in addition to that, because the vertical axis is much heavier to move than the horizontal axis, uh, and I don't know if you noticed this, but in the video you can see on the back of the vertical axis is a big counterweight, which helps make it more balanced, but it also adds to the inertia. So the amount of time that it takes the motor to go from stopped, accelerate up to full speed, and then decelerate back down to stopped is more. So that makes it slower again, in addition to having to move further. So if we went from, for example, work is, to never, we move one row horizontally, but if we wanted to go from faster to more than, and we go two rows vertically, this is gonna take more than twice as long as it takes to move from work is to never. And because we want the camera to arrive at each lyric exactly on the beat, we the time that it has to start moving to the next lyric will vary depending on where it is now and where it has to be next. This is what we want to do. If we know how many BPM the song is or beats per minute, 
we know how far apart the beats are. And now I'm on the daftclub.com looking at the song tempos. And it turns out that for some reason this song is 123.476 BPM. So if I punch into my calculator, 60 seconds divided by 123.476 beats. That tells us that each beat is 0.485924 blah 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 seconds apart. So I'll go ahead and stick that into memory. And if I go back here, let's look at, say, do it on beat number five. We'll multiply that value by five beats. And that tells us that do it is at 2.429 seconds into the song. Or say stronger on beat number 24 is that times 24. 11.662 seconds into the song. But we don't want to have to work out all these values ourselves because it gets more complicated. As I just mentioned, the amount of time taken to move to that lyric will vary depending on where the camera is at the moment. So if it had to travel, say, two rows across, that's going to take roughly twice the amount of time that it takes to travel one row across. So to know when to start moving the camera, we have to know when we want it to arrive at its position minus how long it's going to take to get there from its current position and there's no way we want to have to work all of this out ourselves for the entire song especially because if you tell a lego motor i learned this the hard way to move at 100 percent power or 33 percent power or whatever it doesn't move at the same speed every time the speed that it moves at drops off as the amount of charge in the battery drops off so every time you run the program it runs a little bit slower than it did the previous time so my solution to this was at the start of the program we get the mo the vertical motor to move three rows vertically time how long that took save that value into a numeric array and then move two rows vertically time it save that value into the array move one row, time that, save that, and then it does the same thing horizontally. It moves three horizontal rows, two horizontal rows, one horizontal row, and saves all those times, all those travel times, into numeric arrays, how long it's going to take to perform each of those moves at the current battery level for that run. Now the last thing, when we tell it to move diagonally, so if it's moving from eight to nine, because the vertical axis moves a little bit slower than the horizontal axis, if we told them both to move at 100% speed, you end up with a movement sort of like this because the horizontal motor moves faster than the vertical one does. So you sort of get that sort of jerky sort of motion. So to try and get a more smoother diagonal movement out of it, you have to slow down the horizontal axis to compensate. So especially if we wanted to move, say, two rows vertically and one row horizontally, like from seven to nine, you end up with a movement sort of like this rather than like this. And if we had them both moving at 100% and went like this, you also go past this lyric that's not due to come up yet. So the more smooth the diagonal movement we can get, like, through there, then we don't show up the lyric that's not meant to come up yet. So hypothetically, if this movement took, say, I'm just going to pick figures here and say it took 0.3 seconds to move there, and it takes 0.1 second to move there, then we want to slow down the horizontal axis to 33% speed to try and synchronize the arrival time of each axis. So having said all that, how do we write that into an EV3 program? Well, I'm starting in this program called it Run because that's what we're going to run. And I've tried to comment it pretty well. So after that explanation, hopefully it's a little bit easier to follow. So what we need to know is a whole bunch of values, which I'm going to put into variables and arrays. And if you need to store a bunch of values, arrays are your friend. So we've got this 
first section here, set motor rotation values for all 16 lyrics. And we need two arrays, one to store all the vertical positions of each lyric. I call that all VPARs. And one to store all the horizontal positions of each lyric, which I have called all HPARs. So when I make the arrays, I am going to use the index number, the array index number, as the lyric number. So these numbers that I showed you earlier. So if we looked at, if we told the program to move to say lyric number eight, it will look up index eight of the all VPOS array and find that it's at 953 degrees vertical and index eight of the all HPOS array will say that it's at 600 degrees horizontal. Or if I wanted to look at lyric number three, we look at array index number three, we see that's at 1420 degrees vertical and minus 600 degrees horizontal. We need to tell it how fast the song is going. So the BPM or beats per minute, which as I mentioned before is 123.476. And I've got this other value here, BPM multiplier. Now at the time I wrote this program, I wasn't sure if it would run fast enough to keep up with the song because it's a pretty fast song and Lego robots aren't exactly known for their high speed and accuracy. So I made another variable called BPM multiplier. So if the motors were too slow to keep up with the song, I could change the value of the BPM multiplier to change how fast the program thinks the song is going. So if I needed to allow the camera more time to move between each position, I could make the program think the song was say, half as fast or three quarters as fast or whatever I decided to make it and speed up the video recording after it was finished to bring it back up to the speed of the song. Fortunately I got the camera to move just fast enough so I didn't need to use this but I thought at the time that there was a fair chance the hardware may not be able to keep up with the program so it's really handy to be able to go to one box and change one number from one to say 0.8 for 80% speed or 0.5 for 50% speed and have the program recalculate every single move for you by changing one single value. So then we have these two arrays, beat numbers and lyric numbers that hold all the beat numbers that contain lyrics and which lyric numbers those are, which is pretty much most of the info about the song. You can see that there are lyrics to display on beat numbers 1, 3, 5, 7, 18, 20, 22, 24, 33, 35, 37, 39, etc. all the way up. And every time there is a lyric to display, we need to know which lyric number it is. So 1, 3, 5, 7, 2, 4, 6, 8, 9, 11, 13, 15, 10, 12, 14, 16. And again, every value for the whole song. Okay, now after that, we want to know how long each possible move of the camera is going to take on this run of the program at this level of battery charge. And I've created a couple of my blocks for this. So we've got time verticals here and time, well, I've called it time sideways. And these blocks are pretty well just a copy and paste of each other. And if we will we'll look at time sideways, uh, the first thing to do is create an array of the horizontal travel time. So I've called it H travel times and index one will hold the amount of time that it takes to travel one row. Index two will hold the amount of time that it takes to travel two rows and index three, the amount of time it takes to travel three rows. So we've just got move to first column and start timer. So it moves to minus 600 degrees and resets the timer. Now you might notice I've created my own move blocks here. This is just because a normal move block moves by a certain number of degrees, not to a certain number of degrees. So all there is to that is it reads the current position of the motor, works out where it wants to be and moves by the difference. I'll let you check that out yourself. Um, I won't go into that too much, but we go back to time sideways here. And then the first thing we wanna do move three columns, time it, save it as a variable. So we've got a move block, read the timer, and then we save that into index three of the H travel times array 
because we've just moved three columns. Then we reset the timer, move two columns, time it, save it as a variable. Same thing again, move, read the timer, save it into index two of the horizontal travel times array. Then move one column, time it, save it as a variable. So again, move block, read the timer, save it in index one. So now the H travel times array in index one, two, and three has the amount of time that it takes to travel one, two, and three rows. And then for the program to work out how many rows it has to move next, it has to know where the camera currently is. And it is currently in position one. And then if we quickly click on the time verticals my block, we can see that it does the same thing as the time sideways my block, except for it stores all the vertical travel times instead of the sideways travel times. And we just have an array here called V travel times for that. Now, if we go back to the run program, we can see now that we have all the information that we need about the song, we have to start moving to given lyrics on given beats. And there is only one my block left in the program called move to positions. Now, this is the main block that execute, calculates and executes every move in the song. And if I just zoom out a bit here, just so you can see more of it, uh, you can see that it's quite long, but the advantage of writing the program like this is that we can tell it how to calculate and execute a move once and loop it one or two hundred times and it will do all the working out for you. So I'll just zoom back in here and we'll go back to the start and we can see that the very first thing that we need to know is work out the time when the next lyric shows. Now the way that it works that time out is it just looks at the next index in the beat numbers array which comes off of the loop index and that just increases by one every time it goes through the loop. So I'm going to use the example that I used earlier and pretend we're up to beat number five and that just outputs that into this math block here. So if I get my calculator out and I go 60 seconds divided by A, which if you follow that data wire is the BPM, 123.476 divided by B, which is the BPM multiplier, which I've just left as one because it ended up working in real time. So if I divide that number by one, it doesn't change and then multiplied by C, which is the beat number, which we've called five. And that tells us that the time due at next lyric will be set to 2.429 seconds. Now, you've probably noticed that I've used C plus one here. The reason for that is because the very first beat in the song, the very first work it, is at the very start of the song and the camera doesn't have any time to move to that first position. So I've pushed the entire song back by one beat so that the camera has enough time to move to that very first position. Now after we know what time we are due at the next lyric, we need to know where it is. So we see which lyric is next to work out the travel time. And if I look at Excel and we're at beat number five, then we also want to be at lyric number five. And that, if we look at the next index of the lyric numbers array, that will output lyric number five. So we want to calculate the vertical travel time. If I move over a touch here and see how we do that, we look up index five of the all VPOS array and that gives us the vertical position in degrees of lyric number five and outputs that value into this math block. And the way we work out, we wanna know how many rows we have to travel, not how many degrees we have to travel. And we look at the current vertical position, which was would be set at the end of the last loop. You haven't seen that yet. You'll see it at the end of this loop. But if we were at the previous lyric, which is make it, it is in vertical position one. So current V, 
will be set to 1. And if we follow this little bit of math here, we will work out that we want to be at row 2, and the absolute value of 1 minus 2 is 1. And that outputs this into here, and it looks at index 1 of the V travel times array to find out how long it's going to take to travel one row vertically. And it saves that value as the next V travel time. So after we know the vertical travel time, we need to also know the horizontal travel time, which works in pretty much the same way. So if I go back to Excel, we can see that the previous lyric was in row one and the next lyric is in row three. And if we look at the math block, the current H position is one and the next is going to be three. If we do this a little bit of math here, which I will explain that one in a second as well. And the absolute value of one minus three is two. So we know we have to travel two rows and that outputs that into here. So it looks at index two of the H travel times array, which gives us the amount of time that it takes to travel two rows and outputs that value into the next H travel time. So just quickly, the formulas that I've written in here to work out how many rows we want to move. This is the one for the vertical movements. And as I've written this out, I have just realized that the row numbers that I gave you at the start of this video are wrong. So these are not row one, two, three, and four. They are rows three, two, one, and zero. And I've just realized that now. Uh, it doesn't really matter as far as the program is concerned because each time the program works out what row it's in, it works it out the same way. It's just not what I've got written down in my Excel spreadsheet, but that's not really important, I suppose. So what we do is we get our next vertical position in degrees going into B in the math block. Now, let's say hypothetically we're moving to 1,420 degrees. 1,420 minus 19 divided by 467 gives us 3. So if we were currently in row 1, for example, 1 minus 3 is negative 2 and the absolute value of negative 2 is 2 so from moving from row 1 to row 3 that tells us we're moving 2 rows and it looks up index 2 of the V travel times array to tell us how far it's how long it's going to take to move 2 rows and the horizontal formula I didn't stuff up so we've got the next H pause in degrees Let's say we are moving to negative 200 degrees. Negative 200 plus 600 is 400. 400 divided by 400 is 1. Plus 1 is 2. So minus 200 degrees tells us row 2. And if we were currently in uh, row 1, then 1 minus 2 is negative 1. The absolute value of negative 1 is 1. Or if we were in, say, row, if we wanted to move to row four, 600 degrees plus 600 degrees is 1200, divided by 400 is three, plus one is four, which is what I've just written down here, row four. And if we were currently in row three, three minus four is one, or negative one, and the absolute value of negative one is one. And then we look up index one of the H travel times array to tell us how long it's going to take to move one row. So after we know both the next horizontal travel time and the next vertical travel time, we want to see which of those is higher and make that the travel time. So I've just got this compare block before this switch block here. And that just sees if this next horizontal travel time is greater than the next vertical travel time, which is where that data wire goes if you follow that. And in this case, it will be because we are moving two rows horizontally and one row vertically. So it goes up to here and sets the next horizontal travel time as the total travel time. And I'll just move across here. So this is for our diagonal movements. 
And the first thing we want to do is make sure the next vertical travel time is not zero, because if it is zero, which it may be zero, if it's if we're only moving horizontally, the next vertical travel time will be nothing. And we don't want to get to a point in our program where we have a math block and we divide by zero because your program will crash. So we just go up to this top bit and avoid potential divide by zero error and set both the horizontal and vertical speeds to 100. Even though the vertical axis isn't moving anywhere, the whole idea of this is to just skip this part. Now, in this case, we are moving diagonally. We're moving two rows horizontally and one row vertically. So the next V travel time is not zero, and we come down here. And this adjusts the vertical speed to sync the arrival time of both axes. So we get to this math block, and I am going to just make up some figures for the sake of this example and say that the next vertical travel time was maybe 0.1 second. And we divide that by the next horizontal travel time, which I will say is going to be 0.16 seconds. And we multiply that by 100. And that gives us 62 or 62 and a half. This, this will only take whole numbers, so probably 62. So by setting the horizontal speed to 100 and the vertical speed to 62, hopefully this movement now takes around 0.16 seconds. And if they both take 0.16 seconds, we should have a nice smooth diagonal movement that have the motors of both axes arrive at the next lyric at the same time. Now, if I just move across a little bit here, you can see that the next thing in the program is a loop block called wait to move. Now, the reason I've done this is because for some reason, the wait block that they give you doesn't have a wait for timer option. It has wait for about a million other things, but it doesn't have wait for timer. So I've essentially made my own wait for timer looping block. And the way that I've done that is it gets the time that it's due at the next lyric and takes away the travel time and that tells us when we want to start moving. So if we are on beat number five and we want to be at the next lyric at 2.429 seconds minus the travel time, which we just made up and said was going to be 0.16 seconds, we know that we want to start moving the camera at 2.269 seconds. So that's all that does here is checks the stopwatch to see if it is greater than or equal to 2.269 seconds. And if it is not time to start moving yet, it waits two hundredths of a second and then goes back and it checks again. So that'll loop over and over again, 50 times a second. And once the stopwatch is greater than or equal to 2.269 seconds, then it knows it's time to start moving the motors and it exits this waiting block. So once it's time to start moving, we move to the next vertical position and the next horizontal position. And as you can see, we've got a V move to block and a H move to block. And if we follow these Y's, we can see that these run at the same time. We get our vertical speed and our horizontal speed from the diagonal movement section that I just showed you earlier. And we get our number of degrees that we want to move to. If we follow this data wire back, that goes way back to near the start of the program where we found the number of degrees that we want to move to vertically and horizontally, which was 953 degrees vertical and 200 degrees horizontal for do it. And we, so we move to 953 degrees vertical at the given speed, 200 degrees horizontal at the given speed. And once it has done that, we need to log the current row number so we know where the camera is so it can calculate the next move. And if we follow this data wire back, this just goes back to the same place that this one does. So that's 
puts 953 degrees into this formula that I showed you earlier, which gives us our vertical row number, and logs that in the current V, and the same thing with the horizontal, that just puts 200 degrees into this formula, which gives us our horizontal row number, and logs that in the current horizontal. So then rather than counting how many lyrics there are in the song, I've just used this array operations block that tells us the length of the beat numbers array. So if there was, I don't know how many there is, hypothetically, let's say there's 150 elements in the beat numbers array. It looks at the length of that, that says it's 150 and it outputs that and says to the loop to run 150 times. So if we pretend that we've just finished moving to lyric number five, and we're back at the start of the loop block, we want to work out the time when the next lyric shows. And I'll just run through this very quickly. And if we look at the next beat number and next lyric number, we can see that we are at beat number seven and lyric number seven. So we work out the time that we're due in seconds at beat number seven and we work out that we are going to be at lyric number seven. We see how long that is going to take to move to vertically, given its current vertical position that we just set. And we're going to see how long it's going to take to move there horizontally, given its current horizontal position that we just set. Whichever of those two travel times is higher, we're going to make that the travel time. And if we have to move diagonally, we're going to slow down the faster moving axis to better synchronize the arrival time with the slower moving axis. And then we are going to wait until the right time to start moving to the next lyric. And after it is time to start moving, we want to move to the next vertical and next horizontal positions. After it's done that, we want to log that we are in whatever current vertical and horizontal position we're in and go back to the start of the loop block, move to the next lyric and then the next one and the next one all the way until the end of the song. So now what I'm going to do is play back the very start of that video. This is as soon as I click play on the program and I'm going to play it at 12% speed. That's as slow as it'll let me play it. Now I've hit play. And you don't see anything happen at the start because it's just setting all the values for all the arrays and variables. And then it starts the time verticals my block. You can see it's just moved to the first row there. And then it's going to move three rows to the very top row and time how long this movement takes and save that into index three of the V travel times array. It moves down two rows. You'll see a brief pause and then it'll move down one row time all those movements and save them into a variable. And then it does, starts on the horizontal movements. It's moved to the starting position, traveling three rows across, timing how long that takes. And then it'll start moving back in the other direction. It'll slightly pause after it's moved two rows and save that time and then move one row and save that time. And it starts the move to positions my block. Now it's moving to the first lyric, the first work it, then it's calculating how long it needs to move to the next lyric, executing that move, calculating how long it needs to move to the next lyric and executing that move. Now, that will loop over and over and over and over again until the end of the song. That was just the first three lyrics. And if I play that back again in real time, I'm not sure how this is gonna work with the screen capturing mode on, but as you can see, the whole thing that I just spent half an hour walking you through is over in about probably five seconds. And that's the start of the move to position block looping over and over again there. And that will just go through that till the end of the song. And that's how we make a music video.